is Doug Green, and I'm the publisher of Telecom Reseller. And today, I'm with Bill Verson, who's the President, Communications Market, and Chief Marketing Officer at TNS. Bill, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Doug. I appreciate it. Well, I'm excited to do this podcast. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, robocalls. We're going to be talking about what the trends are, what's happening, and also what uh, what we are hearing from consumers and other people in the market. But before, before I dive into the report that you guys did and all those trends, what is TNS? Yeah, TNS, uh, in, in the most simplistic way to describe it, is it, we provide mission-critical services to our customers across three industry verticals, the payments market, the financial market, and the communications market. And in the communications or telecommunications market, we focus on carriers and their customers. And what we do is we help the network providers manage incoming calls on device and block robocalls while analyzing over about roughly a billion daily call events. And to, that is to identify the bad actors behind the robocalls. So the carriers are the hero of our story. So you're in a great position to know about the robocall issue, maybe more than most other companies. We are, by just by the sheer volume of calls that come across our network, because we are partners with carriers, we see over 1.6 billion call events daily. So it, it, that data we use then to help protect end users. So, you know, uh, we're going to dive now into our report, and the report that basically uh, came out you had a recent uh, robocall investigation report and robocall consumer survey, and it shows, I think, two things, that maybe the robocalling actually has fallen off, but that many people don't feel it. They sort of don't observe that actually it's fallen off. Is that consistent with what you guys found? Th that is, Doug. You're, you're right on the mark. And, you know, to summarize the robocall report, I would say there were three major findings um, that I'd, I'd share. And it's exactly like you said, the, you know, amount of robocalls declined modestly in 2021. There were 78.9 billion robocalls in 2021, which is up from 2020, of, which was 77.2 billion. Now, so it's good that it just modestly increased. The other thing to note though, Doug, too, is pre-pandemic in 2019, there was 106.9 billion robocalls. So going down to 78.9 billion is good. It's modestly up from last year, but it's still down pre-pandemic. To your point, number two, is that while it's down and it just modestly rose 2% in 2021, only 30% of consumers said they feel that fewer robocalls are receiving fewer robocalls uh, than before the pandemic which is not factually accurate, but it's perception. They feel like they're still getting way too many robocalls, and that's the challenge for the industry. And then three major finding of the report is that, you know, robocalls are not coming from the top seven carriers. Very interesting. The top seven carriers account for 73% of all intercarrier call traffic, but they only generate 5% of the high-risk robocalls. So it naturally begs the question, well, where are these calls coming from? Where are these bad actors originating the calls from? And the largest source is the, unfortunately, the VoIP providers. That's where the bad actors are generating the unwanted calls. And, you know, the good news for us as consumers and as an industry is through this, these three findings, the FCC is trying to take some action. So the FCC has moved up the date that VoIP providers have to comply with stir shaken, which is the industry standard for trying to authenticate calls. So they moved up the date that was originally June of 2023 to now June of 2022. So the good news is the report findings we found, the, you know, the government has taken action, the FCC has taken action to try to say, okay, if the VoIP providers, if bad actors are leveraging the VoIP provider network, let's mandate that that standard, the stir shaking standard gets adopted a little bit sooner. Now, I understand that there was also uh, a disparity between the uh, the genders in your findings. 
Absolutely, and that's a really good point that you found out. So during the consumer survey that we did, we found out that there was a, 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 a robocall gender trust disparity in the findings. And so what we found is, you know, three, three quick things there as well. Females do not trust um, or receive robocalls or road huts of any type, even if it's legitimate. If they don't recognize the number, they don't trust it. it up to 81% of females do not like receiving robocalls from political political campaigns or causes. Now that compares to men that said 56% of the men don't like receiving any uh, political campaigns or causes uh, of calls as well. And then the last thing that found is that in robotext, again, following the same thing, females versus males, females, 79% of the women do not like receiving robotext and do not respond to them compared to 60% of men. So you still see the numbers pretty high that all of us don't appreciate the robocalls, but there is a disparity where females don't trust it more than men. So that might also provide a little bit of guidance for uh, those readers that are trying to uh, discuss uh, how maybe to do marketing, uh, that if you've got a political consultant that is a customer, maybe you shouldn't do robocalling. Yeah, very true. Very true. And I think it, it is going to impact how marketers look to be able to reach their customers and I think or the consumers or who they're trying to influence. And I do think they need to rethink, how do I get a call or a reach out of communication so the end users are willing to trust and accept that information or accept that call? And I think the benefit of, you know, some of the technologies like Stir Shaken, that it authenticates who it really is. But then also thing that we'll be talking about in a few minutes is branding the call so they know who it's coming from and what the intent of the call is will help with that. But yeah, if we just do blanket robocalls, the consumers and all of us as end users are getting weary of it. If it's not in our contact database, typically we're not answering the phone because we don't trust it. You know, before we uh, move on to other findings in your thing, this is a significant point uh, in, in the economy, at least women actually are the predominant number of, they are predominant as consumers. More money is spent by women than men as basically consumer and consumer products. Ab absolutely true, and it can't be underscored, the significance of women and females and the fact that they're not trusting communications, right? Right. And so it, it's a major, you're right, it has economic impacts, it has brand relationship impacts. You know, enterprises, legitimate enterprises, are trying to reach, you know, all of us, but females to engage with them, to provide them better service, whether it's picking up a prescription, whether it's a, a banking event, whether it's a renewal of, you know, their radio station, their, their uh, satellite radio station as examples. And so, you know, restoring that trust and voice is something that enterprises need to maintain their relationship with consumers, especially the female population, to consume and, and, and have a relationship. But you know, listen, we need it just for better service, right? And, and again, I, I doesn't underscore the point that females are spending a lot of money, more money than men, mm -hmm. and they're not trusting communications right now, and we as an industry have to solve for that. So how is TNS leveraging advanced data analytics, machine learning, and AI to help combat ro robocalling volume? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that, too. I mean, we sit in a very interesting uh, position in the marketplace by seeing 1.6 billion daily call events across hundreds of carrier networks. And so, again, we just talked about how robocalls have eroded customers' trust and voice calling. What we do is we use AI and machine learning. We have a product called Call Guardian. And what that does, again, is it analyzes these daily call events, again, 1.6 billion call events. And then what we do is we take that and, and, and couple that with crowdsource data, crowdsource data from end users that through the mobile app can provide feedback on a call that they received that was fraudulent. And we bring that all together. And what we do is we create a reputation profile that differentiates legitimate users from the bad actors behind the robocalls. What we then do with that is we use our advanced machine learning 
for blocking the robocalls because we know that they're bad calls because of the data and the characteristics of that data. And we use real-time artificial intelligence with that big data to help us then constantly change the identities, uh, watch the constantly changing identities of the robocallers because the robocallers continue to adapt, Doug, in terms of their methods. So you have to have an algorithm out there to look in machine learning to see how they're changing their behaviors. And that's where by having 1.6 billion call events, we map that call behavior and then are able to identify the worst of the worst. How has enterprise branded calling impacted the robocall data? Yeah, it's a great question too. So listen, we know Americans are fed up with robocalls. You and I are fed up with robocalls, right, Doug? Oh, and that's why only 11% of consumers are answering their calls from an unknown number. So, but not all robocalls are bad, right? And, and that's the tough part. Um, what we're looking at is, you know, the consumer demand for branded call solutions, there is a demand right now for branding calls to help us restore trust and voice. In our survey, 82% of consumers want their carrier to provide more caller information, whether it's a logo, whether it's the name of the caller, or the reason, et cetera. So they have the power to make their own decision on whether or not to answer the call. 77% of the people we surveyed want branded calling to avoid miss missing legitimate robocalls. So ultimately they want choice. We want to be able to answer the calls that are we feel that are important. Don't make those decisions for us. And so this solution is designed to increase that call answer rate and the ability to be able to Again, trust your communications. So how does this translate to tangible results for robocall issue at, at hand? Yeah, I mean, how this can translate into like real results here is a few things. Listen, legitimate organizations like banks, schools, hospital, health agencies, sometimes they rely on automated calls to reach people with time sensitive information, right? And then when you don't have anybody answering the phone on the other end, that can cause a real problem. Um, and so what's been happening, I'll tell you what's been happening and how it, it, it helps this whole ecosystem. What's been happening is the good news is some wireless carriers over the last few months have been rolling out branded calling or we call it enterprise branded calling, which is an attempt to restore the trust in those calls by delivering rich content whether it's a logo or even just a name for right now on the incoming call screen to increase the call answer rates. And so that's a big deal because it allows the enterprises to deliver a richer call experience, but ensure that the calls get through. And with that, we're also verifying that the call is really coming from who it is. So a quick example is if you have a pharmacy that you have put in a prescription to that you want filled, well, now the, the pharmacy is looking and saying, hey, did you want generic or did you want brand? Now, if you just come and you don't answer the call, you're waiting in line, you're frustrated, and it takes longer to get that prescription for you fulfilled. Well, now you get that telephone call and it names the brand pharmacy. It has the logo. It shows that it's a verified call. And it may say, would you like the reason for the call is, is generic or brand name prescription? Now I'm answering the call and saying, whoa, whoa, that's important. I did just call my prescription. Mm -hmm. I answer the call. Generic is fine. Great. Now, what just happened to that example? Three major things just happened. The enterprise is happy. That pharmacy is happy because not only did I provide a better service to my consumer, but I'm able to satisfy their need. So when they come up, it's a better experience in my store and I close the sale. Two, the consumer. The consumer, all of us, you and I, Doug, would be like, great. I answered that call and now I'm saving time when I go to that pharmacy to pick it up and I know that I'm getting the better option because for me, generic worked just fine. So it was a good experience for me. And then three, the carrier. Why the carrier? Because the carrier is providing this differentiated experience with the logo, the name and the reason and giving the trust back in the voice communications that you and I as end users say that was a cool experience. That's what I like to see in a brand in a call that's coming to me because I'm getting more information and I can engage in that brand how I want to. And wow, that carrier is the only one providing it. That's pretty cool. Or multiple ones are providing it. It provides differentiation, which we know all carriers are competing on. 
Now, can you walk us through how enterprise branded calling especially helps businesses reach their customers? Absolutely. How enterprise uh, branded calling helps enterprises reach their customers, again, providing the name or the name, logo, and reason for the call. And so now, instead of getting an unknown number from the enterprise trying to call me up and wants to engage with me and provide me a service or give me choices to buy services, now instead of an unknown number, which we all, like the survey said, only 11% of people answer those kind of calls. Now I see that it's an enterprise name that's calling me up and I know I wanna engage in that brand and I answer it. And now the enterprise has a better relationship. They're having people answer the phone and engaging with them so they can provide the service which ultimately provides greater share of wallet for that enterprise because now they've been able to either sell that consumer or be able to service that consumer in the way that we expect to be served as customers. So it's a win-win. So have bad actors adopted their, adapted their tactics to circumvent strategies put in place to minimize robocalls? Yeah, and it's really interesting to know that the bad actors, they're forced to constantly adapt their tactics to, to you know, again, try to uh, counter the FCC and what the carriers are trying to do to stop their efforts. Things like the FCC mandates with Sir Shaken, things like what our company does, Transaction Network Services, working with carriers, providing the robocall blocking solutions. And so the bad actors they are constantly trying to find different ways to sort of be able to adapt. What we saw is there's there's two things they do. One is we saw just in December of 2021 that the same numbers that are originating fraudulent robocall calls on the voice network, 48% of them shifted and started doing robotech scams. So the same number started reaching out through robotech to try to be able to scam. So they saw they were getting blocked on the voice channel and started the shift to the texting channel. So again, they're just trying to find ways when doors close, they keep trying to be creative and find other ways. The second thing they do, and we've been seeing this for years and they continue to do it, is they adjust to the seasonal topics or the uh, conventional topics that are going on at the time. What do I mean by that? Right now we're in tax season. And so right now a very prevalent scam is the IRS scam. And so with tax filing day on the horizon, the bad actors, what they're doing is they're targeting consumers, tax returns as an opportunity to exploit. So they're calling up and they're telling people that they owe a certain amount of money to the IRS and people are falling for it because it's topical. It's what is on our mind right now. And so the bad actors exploit that. You're going to see during the political campaigns that you're gonna see a lot of robocalling be topical around that period of time as well for donations. We see it every year that there's an election that the bad actors pick the topical topics and they try to exploit it because it's a path of least resistance. So Bill, I wanna really thank you for uh, coming to our podcast today and talking about this really interesting topic. It's, uh, it's an ongoing battle that hasn't been won yet, but it's interesting to see where the trends are. Uh, where can we learn more about this report and also TNS? Yeah, and Doug, thank you very much for inviting me on to your, your podcast and being able to share what we do. Um, your your listeners can go to you know tnsi.com and you know point out that on our website we actually track the top scams that are occurring on a monthly basis. So you can go there in real time and be able to see a page where we list the top robocalls, and hopefully it helps your listeners be able to avoid the bad actors. Well, Bill, again, thank you very much indeed. I know this is not a closed topic, so I know we'll be talking about this again soon, but for now, thanks very much. I sincerely look forward to it, Doug. Thank you.